Hi folks, this is Chris at Art Secret Studio. Earlier this week in the classroom, we were going through a program I call Art Mapping, where you find out what is it that you really like about this picture and you start to journal and write it down. And during this, we were going over some of the compositional choices that I believe are incredibly important for you. Very simple, that takes no talent, called Plane and Recession. It actually is kind of the introduction to Baroque art, the difference between Titian and Rubens. Hope you like it. Look for more of these videos shortly. My plane recession. So for some of you that don't know, lines that are parallel to the plane are, are vertical and horizontal for stability. Lines that are diagonal are for action and S curve have a hint of movement and a feeling. Mine is about the S curve and I'm going to write S curve because there's movement, but it's going to be subtle. Now, mine is also because I see all these curvilinear lines in his hair in different places. So it lends itself to that too, the photo. I have to be picking up with, sometimes in the photograph, you're, you're, you've got to find, you know, what is going on here? You know, wow, it is the diagonals I see in my picture. It is the horizontals I see in my picture. It is the curvy round shapes I see in his hair. Yeah, Chris. If something is already pure obscure, doesn't that sort of mean it's recessive like that dimension on this? Is it everything's going into the background? Um, I don't know if that's true. Um, I, I understand what you're saying. For some of you who might not have heard it, like the camera, because <laughs> it doesn't always pick up on people in the background. Uh, I need multiple mics. Um, his idea is incredibly valid and solid. When things are chiaroscuro, your darks are gradually getting darker farther away. Does that mean things are automatically recessioned? So I think the definition of recessive recession is it's receding into the background. Recession is more Baroque. If you look at the difference between Titian and Rubens in the Adam and Eve in the garden, Titian has her like this, him, and Rubens turns the shoulder just slightly diagonal and it's recession and it's the beginning of recession. So everything in the early Italian Renaissance are all these columns parallel to the page, even Leonardo, and yet it's slowly getting darker, disappearing. So what does it mean when it's parallel to the page and yet it's slowly getting darker when it's re receding? Then it would mean there's a stillness to this, though things are slowly disappearing. It would be on the same as you say in an analogous color scheme, which we'll get there. It's on page 375, but we'll get there. When it's uh, analogous color scheme, it's a quiet, subtle change. When it's a complementary color scheme, it's exploding excitement and beautiful color. Well, Rubens is exploding excitement with beautiful color. And Titian would be analogous subtle color changes, slow and graceful. So I still think there's a separation, but it is something you're, I think you're spot on. I think when you're saying, you know, I need action here, then I need to lean toward recession. And when I need it to be still, even though there's movement, I need to lean toward plane. But that means also the amount of recession and plane would change perfectly parallel to the page is calm and peaceful. A slight hint is a slight movement. The more radical that diagonal, the more radical that movement. So now the question is, I said there's a movement is subtle. So how can I add to that and say more? Well, it talks cheap. Oh, you see, don't filter it. Write it down because you know what that could do one day. What if I took an a, a, a article in the newspaper about people on the reservation and we're going to help and they didn't. And what if I glued that to my painting? See, if I edit what I'm writing, I prevent the creativity that could come from this later. Oh yeah, but I just make realistic paintings. I don't do that stuff my wife does. 
Wait a minute. I thought you were stepping in fate and you weren't going to be passively waiting for change. I'm only asking that whatever pops up in your head, you write it down. That's all I'm asking. I'm not saying we even use it. So I'm going to write it. It doesn't even make sense. I want to be part of someone's story. Talks cheap. Who are you talking to? Me? Yeah, well, what have you done lately? Oh, wait, isn't that what I always ask God? What have you done to him for me lately? That's funny how these circular conversations come around. So I'm going to write it. Talks cheap. Want to be part of someone else's story. Okay? So therefore, I might want to introduce some plain lines, maybe the shoulders. So I have a hint of movement with the lines that are parallel saying, yeah, but things are moving, but they're really not moving. I need to feel for this person I'm painting. I want this painting to be your painting. And the more things we ask ourselves, the more we have to go by. These are just words. They're just questions. If they're not some masterpiece, it's just another way to get another question. 